feminism is irrelevant in this day and age because so-called feminists are just women complaining because they want special treatment rather than equal rights. Good job, girl. A highly accurate description of feminism. It is basically irrelevant nowadays. I mean, to be fair, almost all of the, um, the, the, the so-called feminists who claim to be that and who advocate for things on the grounds of feminism uh, typically don't actually advocate for anything of particular importance or uh, that is actually backed up by reality. Uh, typically it's things like um, man-spreading and um, the, the wage gap, things that have uh, either been debunked or uh, that never really uh, even existed at all or aren't really problems. So, yes, this is, this is a highly accurate description. Congratulations, well done. Thank you very, very much. However, I dare say you're just going to say, this is what some people think, only it's wrong! Which, of course, is wrong. False. I fucking knew it. misconception that many people are under and which I want to address in this video. If you guys have yet to see Sam's video this week then I highly recommend you go and do that because it deals with this topic as well and it's really well done and there's a link in the description. Wonderful. In that case I'll deal with her once I've finished with you. And I understand that there are problems with feminism such as the lack of intersectionality and disregard for the experiences of trans women but I do try my best to be sensitive of these issues. Really? That's what you're going for. Those, those are the issues with feminism that you're going to go for. Okay, intersectionality and the fact that some of you are, uh, what, what's the term of picture? It's turf? You're turfs sometimes. Okay, yeah, great, good. good. You, you've identified two um, issues. Why have you ignored all the misogyny and the misandry perpetuated by the movement? Why have you ignored scum, the Society for Cutting Up Men? Why have you ignored International Castration Day? Why have you ignored false rape accusations? Why have you ignored every bad thing that feminism has done? Because gotta say, there's a lot of it. So, feminism is still very much necessary today because... Because girls are frequently told that if they don't accept the normalisation of sexist attitudes through jokes that they don't have a sense of humour. Nope. In fact, I don't think any woman has ever been told that ever. Because you see, that's a very, very odd way of phrasing it with feminist rhetoric. What they actually mean is, if someone tells a joke, and a girl says, I don't think you should be able to tell that joke because I find it offensive, then they get told, you've got no fucking sense of humour, mate. Because it's a fucking joke. There's no reason whatsoever to uh, disallow jokes, to prevent jokes, to... to um, censor jokes, because jokes are fucking jokes. They do literally no fucking harm whatsoever. They're jokes. It's, it's ridiculous. Ugh, I can't stand these twats are all like, no, 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 you, 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 you can't joke about things because it's sexist! <laughs> no, that's, that's not the way that works. Because, of course, a sexist joke, as you would refer to it, is still a joke. That's the important word. Now, if what you'd said is, you can't punch someone in the face because you are being sexist, well, I'd say, well, the punching in the face is the thing that's a problem, actually, but yeah, okay, fine, yeah, okay, don't punch someone in the face because you're sexist. Don't think, well, that's a woman, it's okay to punch in the face. That's a man, it's okay to punch them in the face. Although, admittedly, I have seen feminists uh, advocate for that. That's fine. A physical action that causes actual physical harm to another person, fine, you can say, I would rather that didn't happen, that's a good thing, and I will, I will say, yes, yes, wonderful, let's all prevent physical actions that harm people. Jokes don't do that. Because jokes are jokes! Because dumb blonde jokes are always about women. I've actually heard dumb blonde jokes about men, so no, they're not. But even if they were, that wouldn't actually mean you needed a movement designed for apparently gaining equal rights. Because uh, equal time in jokes derogatorily aimed at a particular type of person is not a right. If you're suggesting that feminism is required in order that uh, when a joke is told about a dumb person with blonde hair, 
uh, that 50% of the time it should be men and 50% of the time it should be about women, then I've got to say, clearly feminism is not necessary, because that's a pathetic reason that makes no goddamn sense whatsoever. Because women who say they don't want to have children aren't taken seriously. Okay, that's a very subjective thing. Almost certainly some of them will be and some of them won't be. Ultimately, individual attitudes by people listening to someone else talk in a conversation or whatever are not something you can control with a movement, nor are they something you should even desire to control with a movement, because that's fucking thought policing. That's ridiculous. It's totalitarian. It's, it's, it's completely and utterly absurd and nightmarish. Now, if you say, as a woman, I don't want to have kids, fine, fair enough. That's okay. Doesn't bother me in the slightest. And it probably won't bother most people. Might bother some people. Some people might be like, what? You don't want to have kids? Of course you want to have kids. You're a woman. I think, okay, fair enough. That might be sexist. However, as far as I can tell, the vast majority of um, women do want to have kids, as it is a biological function that they can perform and they are evolutionarily predetermined, predisposed, in fact, to want to have kids, to want to procreate, as all humans are. Uh, it's strange to suggest that this is a thing that uh, only women will go through, as I, I know that um, I've, I have seen men be questioned when they say that they don't want to have kids, and also I've seen them not be questioned. It sort of works both ways again. So the issue becomes, is it okay to question someone when they say they don't want to have kids? Yes, of course it is. That's totally fine. You're allowed to question people. Question about whatever the fuck you want. Hell, it's a good idea. Go question people. So again, this is not a reason we need feminism. It's not a reason for anything, really. You just said something. Something that wasn't even entirely true, but that even if it was, wouldn't actually be a reason still. Good job, you're doing great so far. Because instead of letting women decide whether to shave their legs or not, society makes us think that the former is the only appropriate decision. No, it doesn't. Not in the slightest. Not, not even a little bit. Society, in general, has a preference, and that preference is that women typically look more attractive after they've shaved their legs, because their legs are smoother and nicer. This is the opinion of the vast majority, and that's all it is. It's an opinion. Feel free to ignore an opinion. You can do that. It's very easy. Literally, you have two choices. You have the choice of do the thing that society will like or don't. It's really rather simple. Freedom of choice. It is something you actually possess. You have a mind. You can decide of your own free will. I do or I do not want to shave my legs. Then you do that. Very, very simple. Ultimately, no one else is in control of your mind. No one else is in charge of your mind. No one else's responsibility is for your mind. No one else has responsibility for your thoughts. You alone do that. You decide what to think. Don't blame other people. Don't say, it's society's fault that I think that I have to shave my legs. Because guess what? You don't have to shave your legs. It's very fucking simple. You are responsible for your own thoughts. If you have a thought, don't say, well, it was that guy's fault. He did it. Because that's bollocks. You have the thought. Even if this were the case, even if society somehow did a, a condition girls to think that it's more appropriate for them to have shaved legs than to not, they could still choose not to and it wouldn't be a reason we needed a movement dedicated to women's whatever, supremacy, I guess. This literally is a complete non sequitur. It's irrelevant. You fucking simpleton. Because Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State of the United States, is still frequently asked questions about and criticised on her personal appearance. I always have an issue with this kind of reasoning because it's ridiculous. The whole uh, women get comments about their appearance. Yeah, okay, so do men. W women get asked about their appearance. Yeah, so do men. 
okay, but when it happens to women, it's sexist. How? Because it happens only to women and never to men. Yeah, okay, great, good job. Yeah, bollocks. Also, understand who is asking the questions, who is making the comments. It is the vast majority of the time, women, for the purposes of entertaining other women. You go and you read women's magazines and so on and so forth, things designed specifically for women to read about other women. What they want to know is what other women look like, what they're wearing, how they work, because women are interested in this sort of thing. Market forces dictate that these products exist because women want them and they will continue to exist as long as women want them. If you want women to no longer be asked about their appearance, no longer have comments made on their appearance, what you need to do is fundamentally change the attitudes of women and their interests. So don't tell me you need feminism because unless feminism is at the psychological level uh, socially conditioning somehow all women on the planet to no longer be interested in the thing they happen to be interested in. It's not really gonna work and even if that were what feminism was I would still oppose it because that's fucking terrifying. Because on average women only earn 77% of what men earn and that's only white women. Women of colour earn considerably less. The operative word here is earn. The wage gap has been debunked on numerous occasions by so, so many people. More than 30 years it has been debunked. I do not understand how you can believe in this lie. Now, the, the biggest reason, as far as we can tell, is the personal decision of the individual. On average, women tend to go into less high-earning positions. There was a time a while back um, on Fox News, and there was this um, a, a bloke came on, and he was arguing for traditionalism for some reason. Can't remember why. Um, and uh, it, it, even the uh, like the host uh, was was sort of like, oh my god, I can't believe he's saying the things he's saying. And in some ways, yeah, no, come on, what he was saying was ridiculous. But there was one thing he said that was particularly accurate, and it was, women earn less because they choose to earn less. Now at the time, people were sort of taking it at, um, at, at face value and, and saying, what, you mean like women are going to work and being all like, hello, I demand I get paid less than that guy over there. No, of course that's not what he meant, but that's what people assumed he meant. That was the kind of bollocks people were thinking, like, what, come on, women choose to go into jobs where they get less money. Yeah, actually, yes, yes, they do. Because, on average, women choose jobs that um, are safer, that are easier, that are more comfortable, that have better uh, hours, that require less overtime, that require less manual labour, that are less dangerous, that are less dirty, and so on and so forth and they tend not to um, try and reach as high, they're better, not as good at salary negotiations, uh, they take time off work to, I don't know, have kids and things. There's all kinds of reasons that women tend to earn less than men, and they're all basically due to their own personal decisions. Now, I can't remember what the actual stat is, but they've got um, most, almost all of the wage gap is... Uh, explained by these personal choices, but there is an unexplained amount at present. Now, I can't remember how, how precisely how much it was. I think it may have been uh, somewhere between two and eight um, percent was uh, the, the amount that is unaccounted for. But that does not mean that that two to eight percent is sexism. It could be. It is possible that it's just very well hidden that we don't know about it. However, I would suggest that that 2 and 8% is still probably just personal choice, considering that personal choice accounts for all the other percentage difference, and there's probably stuff we didn't even factor in. Please look things up. Don't just accept blindly what you've been told. That's a terrible idea. Because toys that encourage creative play in a domestic setting are almost exclusively advertised towards girls, while toys that encourage creative play to do with engineering and inventing are almost exclusively advertised towards boys. Again, market forces. People have decided that these are the things they want. On average, members of that sex will want those things. On average, members of the other sex will want the other things. 
this is what people have chosen of their own free will based on their own personal preferences and that is fine. Advertising companies have recognized that these are the choices these people have made of their own free will and they have decided to exploit this factor in order to make more money and it works and it continues to work and that is why they continue to do it because it continues to work. It's really very simple and ultimately who cares? If you do not like the thing that is typically advertised to your sex and you actually like the thing that is typically advertised to the other sex, you know what you do? You know what you do? You, you, you buy the other thing. You buy the thing advertised to the other sex because no one is fucking stopping you. No one is stopping a small boy walking into a shop, picking up a girl version of Lego and being all like, yeah, yeah, I want the girl version. No one's going to stop him. No one's going to be like, huh, you want to buy this? Fuck off. Get out. You're banned for life from Toys R Us. No one's going to do that. It's going to be like, fuck you buying this. All right, there you go. Because no one cares except feminists, and feminists don't understand how free will work. Because the vast majority of popular movies don't pass the Bechdel test. That's irrelevant. The Bechdel test is pointless. It's a terrible test. For those of you who don't know what the Bechdel test is, um, as far as I can remember, uh, you pass the Bechdel test provided your medium, whatever your, your, your art form in whatever medium you're using, um, contains uh, a scene in which two female characters talk to one another about something that isn't related to a male character. Yay! Who gives a fuck if a film passes it? Do you think that now you write a film, you write the plot, you write the characters and so on and so forth, you do the film and then you think, oh shit, yeah, well, we haven't got a scene in which two of the female characters talk about something that isn't one of the male characters. You know what we should do? We should just insert that so we pass the test. No, that's just stupid. And yet it is the sort of thing that feminists want. So much so in the fact that I, I'm pretty sure, I think it might be Sweden, has a, um, a feminist rating system on games and films in which if they pass the Bechdel test, they get a little mark on them saying, passes the Bechdel test kind of thing. And if they don't, then they get a little mark saying, doesn't pass the Bechdel test. <gasps> because Sweden is a feminist utopia. And that's why Sweden's shit. Anyway, um... <laughs> Yeah, the Bechdel test is completely irrelevant and pointless and terrible and no one should care about it because it's utterly irrelevant to everything. Let people make whatever art they like. If you don't like the art, and if you don't like it for a ridiculous arbitrary reason like two women don't talk in it about something that isn't a boy, then fair enough, don't consume that artwork. You don't have to. You have free will. If you want to make art that does pass the Bechdel test, because you find that it's important, do so! This is the thing feminists don't seem to understand. They have the ability, like everyone else, to go out and produce. They can make things. However, they seem not interested in making things, in being a, a positive force in the world. They seem to instead want other people to alter themselves to suit them, or alternatively, to consume other people's things. It's like the whole bloody, what's it called, Spider-Man, everyone wanting him to be black thing, and Stan Lee being all like, fuck off, make your own superhero, he's my superhero, I made him, and he's white. It's, yeah, okay, fair enough, good for you, it's your superhero, you made him white, excellent. You want a black superhero? Fine, make a black superhero. It, it's, it boggles the mind how ridiculous these people are. Like, well, no, we don't want to do our own stuff. That's difficult. That requires hard work. Can't we just have other people's hard work pay off for us instead by having them change it to our will? Do you see why I call feminists pathetic? Feminism is still important because most girls first experience sexual harassment at the age of 12 or 13, or younger. Hello and welcome to Citation Needed. I'm your host, Brendan Circuses, and you've just won our top prize. Because women in comic books are frequently drawn in supposedly provocative but physically impossible positions. I've never actually noticed this. Um, I know that they're often drawn in uh, provocative ways. This is true. People like looking at attractive people standing provocatively, sitting provocatively, and so on and so forth. Because, you know, people are human. But I've never noticed them to be impossible. Unless, of course, you're using the whole uh, impossible way feminists normally do, by which they mean, I personally can't do those things. 
<laughs> they, they do, it's the thing they do with beauty standards as well. Impossible beauty standards! Well, you mean she's hot and you're not. Because that's all that they ever mean. This beauty standard is impossible! No, 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 this person's just hotter than you. Are they just saying, this is impossible because I can't get into that position? And what you mean is, this person happens to be more flexible than you, happens to be thinner, more attractive, happens to have bigger boobs, or whatever. It's quite pathetic, really, to consider that, but I would not be surprised if that was what they were on about. If they're on about um, things being unrealistic uh, in superhero comics, then i got to say, I think they're barking up the wrong tree there. Because last year, Anita Sarkeesian, one of my favourite bloggers, had a game created about her where the objective was to beat her up. Or because she suggested making a series of videos looking at the role of women in video games. I never actually played that game. I know it existed. I knew it existed at the time. Um, just doesn't sound completely interesting to me. Ultimately, I couldn't care less whether or not she had that video, that, that, that game made about her. That game could be made about me. It wouldn't mean that I needed uh, a, like a male version of feminism. That would be ridiculous. People have the right to make games all they like. And when you say, this was all because she wanted to make some videos about women's representation in video games. No, it's because uh, she was a social justice warrior and feminist and she doesn't like that kind of thing. It's the same reason you find an awful lot of anti-feminists will refer to uh, feminists as uh, cunt or whatever. We typically wouldn't have done that in the past, I, I don't believe. Um, we do it nowadays because we know it offends them. So this is the thing. You, when you say, I find that offensive, what you mean is, using only words, using only pictures, they have managed to harm me. To be so pathetic that you announce, for some reason, your weakness being that you are unduly affected by words. What you're going to do is end up causing people to go, Ha! Now we know how to harm them without actually causing any physical harm. And it's very easy and anyone can do it. So what they're going to do is do it. If what she says is, I don't like the way women are portrayed in video games. I don't like the fact that you can hurt women in video games. They're going to make a video game in which women can be hurt. Specifically her, because she's a woman. No one actually gets hurt in the game. No one is hurt in real life. No one is harmed by this. No one in the slightest. Because it's only a game. It's a very important distinction to make. Often you'll have feminists be like, in fact, actually, I'm pretty sure it's Arkeesian. Or was it? No, it was, I think it was... Um, uh, Josh uh, McIntosh um, said that, uh, that, that there is no um, distinction between fantasy and reality. Games are real. Everything that happens in a game is happening in real life. Just indicating how mental feminist frequency really is. Because the concept of girl gamers still exists, rather than gamers who just happen to be female. Actually, I think what you're referring to is fake gamer girls. Uh, because that is actually a thing that people talk about um, within the gaming community. They tend not to talk about gamer girls, as in girls who play games, because girls who play games are accepted in the community as much as boys who play games are. No one cares about that. They, they, you know, if you're a girl and you come in and you play games, great, well done, good job. Do you want to have a game? Sure, actually, let's have a game. That's as far as that goes. That kind of interaction is easy and simple and happens constantly all throughout the gaming community. Whereas there are girls who specifically, and I assume this happens to boys as well, although it's, it's clearly not as common, um, who, who deliberately attempt to emulate the uh, gamer culture, kind of try to uh, associate with it without actually being gamers themselves. And it's this fake gamer girl that is a, uh, a trope, or whatever you want to call it, um, that does exist and that people do talk about. Oh, I've never known anyone to actually be all go home gamer girl. <laughs> known people to be all go home gamer gate girl, but that's a topic for another time. Oh, and in case anyone is confused, I was referring to anti gamers, not um, actual gamer gators. They seem to be very inclusive, considering that the vast, a vast amount of them are actually female, much to the chagrin of the aggros.
Because even some of the most iconic women in geek culture are still accused of being posers. Okay. Try and sort this out in your head. Posers exist. People have the right to accuse anyone of literally anything. People are going to accuse people of things that exist. Therefore, people are going to accuse people of being posers. The end. There's nothing wrong with accusing people of things, uh, necessarily. Particularly if the accusation is true. Now, if all you're saying is, I think, or I suspect, something like, um, I think this person is lying. Fair enough. That's not actually going to do any particular harm, necessarily. Uh, the action of a false accusation is not inherently wrong, unless, of course, you are aware that the accusation is false. If you say, I think this person is a poser, and you know that that's not true, then, of course, that's wrong. If, however, you suspect something to be the case, and you make the accusation, and it turns out you were just wrong, it's not actually evil or immoral, it's just unfortunate. So I would say this. If they are posers, they deserve to be accused. If they are not posers, then people still have the right to accuse them, if that's what they believe. Uh, however, if someone falsely accusing them of being a poser would be wrong. Nowhere in any of that do we require feminism, particularly considering that feminism often applauds false accusers of things and typically it's significantly more serious than whether or not you are really a gamer. Because more often than not, rape is involved. Because being called feminine is still an insult for guys, and even sometimes for girls. I mean, the reason being called an effeminate or feminine or whatever is typically an insult for guys is because typically men are masculine and it's usually insulting to be called something you're not, in the same way that if someone calls a man a girl, or if someone calls a girl a boy, it's because uh, they're not that. It wouldn't make any sense to insult someone by calling something that they are. Um, now, if you have no issue with a man being feminine, or if uh, you have no issue with a girl being masculine or whatever, then that's fine. Or if you have no issue with a girl being feminine, that's fine. On the other hand, you can personally prefer it if people are the way they naturally tend to be, and that's also fine. You can have whatever personal preference you like, it's a personal preference. And even insulting people for that. If you go to someone who's not particularly masculine and say, you're not very masculine, I don't like that. Fair enough, you're allowed to say that. There's no issue with that either. I don't understand what your problem is with this. Um, if your problem is just that people have attitudes that you don't like, well, I don't really care. There's no reason you need a, a movement to try and change the minds of people you don't like because they're not actually doing anything wrong. Now if there are people out there who are killing because of this or whatever or are going around um, torturing effeminate men then yes, I can see why there may be there may need to be a movement for that but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. So good luck actually having a decent reason because so far you haven't had one. Because many young women think it's appropriate to distinguish themselves by saying that other women are catty or slutty or stupid. Have you considered that perchance other women might be catty or slutty or stupid? It is after all appropriate to refer to people by what they are. If your issue here is that girls tend to um, dislike one another, Again, this is not a problem feminism can solve. It's not a problem. It's not an issue. There's no reason to deal with it. And dealing with it would require mind control of an, a ridiculous and terrifying nature. So stop. Please. You are digging yourself into a deeper hole. Just stop digging and climb out. Because slut is still used as an insult. Who cares? Literally, who cares? It's, it's an insult. It's not a problem at all. People can use whatever the fuck they want as an insult. Not a reason to need feminism. You are still, still wrong. 
Because guys tend to assume that women dress and act the way they do for their benefit. This is because they do. Now, I'm not saying at all that all women, all the time, always dress specifically for the attention of men. I'm saying that an awful lot of them do an awful lot of the time. And that's fine. And it's fine to suspect that that is the reason that they do, because often they do. There's nothing wrong with this at all. Because when a girl is raped, people rush to point out what she did to put herself in that situation. Again, I've still never actually seen this happen. I know feminists talk about it all the time, like it's a thing that happens all the time, but I've never seen it happen. Um, I assume that at least, at some point, someone somewhere once did this. Otherwise, no, actually, no, they could just have made it up. Okay, fair enough. This may never have happened at all. But uh, I, am, I am well aware that people do sometimes, after the fact, say, well, the, here are the preventative measures she could have taken, considering what occurred beforehand. And that's fine. It's also fine to say, girls, in future, if you don't want to be raped, this is one of the ways that this incident could have been avoided if she hadn't done X, Y, or Z. Because guess what? You actually have responsibility for your own actions. And so does the rapist. The rapist doing the rape, okay, is the one responsible for the rape. No arguments here. That is entirely true. However, there can also be some responsibility on the part of the person who got themselves into a situation where they could have been raped. Now, is this to say that it's their fault? No, of course not. That's ridiculous. This is to say only that we have the potential to keep ourselves out of danger and that our own personal choices and our own movements, the things we do, the choices we make, the decisions we take do result in changes in circumstances which can negatively affect our potential outcomes. Risk assessment is not victim blaming. It is letting people know what they can do to avoid negative circumstances, including, but not limited to, rape. If you say, look, it's better if you have some sort of weapon on you to defend yourself against rape, don't respond with, don't teach me how to not get raped, teach men how not to rape. Because that's fucking retarded. If I tell you to lock your doors at night so you don't get burgled, don't respond with, don't teach me how to not get burgled, teach men not to burgle. Do you see how ridiculous it is? No one wants girls to be raped. No one wants boys to be raped. Well, except those people who actually apologize for rape typically feminists, and, of course, actual rapists. But, of course, if you're a rapist, you're not going to be convinced by an argument of teach them not to rape, because that won't work. Ultimately, what it comes down to is whether or not people are capable of taking care of themselves. And so when people say, please look after yourself, here's how you can do it, here's how you can prevent things like this in the future, here's how this could have been avoided, what they're saying is, we would like you to be safe. Here's how you can be safe. Let us help you be safe. There's nothing wrong with that. Because when a guy is raped, he's perceived as weak. Typically, actually, it's just ignored, or it's excused, or it's laughed at. Mostly by feminists. But uh, the issue here is not one that can actually be solved with feminism. That's one of the reasons we have the men's rights movement because feminism isn't actually doing anything to help that. In fact, it has been positively negative, positively negative, on the circumstances of male rape victims. There's a reason we don't really have male shelters for domestic abused males, and where we don't have uh, help for men who have been raped. There's a reason that we laugh at prison rape and don't care about it, and so on and so forth. There's a reason that the legal definitions uh, of rape uh, exclude female perpetrators and sometimes uh, exclude male victims. It's because people don't care about men. And this is encouraged by feminists for the most part. The whole men being perceived as weak if they get raped thing 
is just one of the problems surrounding men getting raped. And it's a very minor one, and one that doesn't really matter. What matters is what society does. The actual physical actions. People's opinion doesn't really matter. What matters is the physical nature of what occurs. In a society where you cannot claim you were raped by a woman, if you are a man, there is a problem. In a society where if you are raped by a woman and you are underage, that woman can then claim child support from you. That is a problem. These are things feminism is not trying to solve. These are things the men's rights movement are trying to solve. Stop telling us we need feminism for this. Feminism isn't helping. It's making things worse. Because when a girl doesn't want to have sex, she's a friend-zoning bitch. No, when girls put guys in the friend zone, she's a friend-zoning bitch. Very important distinction to make here. Just not having sex with a guy doesn't mean that guy's in the friend zone. The friend zone is an actual thing with a definition and meanings that actually matter. You can't just make it mean whatever you want. No, oh, no! I forgot. You're a feminist. You can just redefine things however you wish, can't you? Oh, that's such a, an important and very, very powerful ability you have there. Wish I had that. I actually have to stick by what people actually believe, instead of just making shit up as I go along. Because even though women are told that cooking and art are feminine pursuits, the majority of great artists and great chefs are still men. Welcome to a meritocracy. Turns out you all suck. Now I'm just kidding. Of course, women can do well, just as well as men in fact, sometimes even better. Individual men and individual women will do better than individual men and individual women. Uh, what you find here is that on average men tend to do better overall. Does this mean men are actually better? Not necessarily. It could still just be um, taken down to the whole personal choice thing again. If fewer women go into uh, professional art and professional chefery, if uh, fewer women are good at it, if fewer women push further, if fewer women innovate as much, and so on and so forth, you'll end up with uh, a greater uh, amount of males at the top. As well as the fact that we've, we, end up, we, we know, already know um, things like uh, in the world of business, women tend to make up like, fewer CEO positions and board of directors positions and so on and so forth because women tend not to want to go any higher. They tend to get to a, a comfortable position for themselves and then stay there. They don't want to go any higher. Men, on the other hand, are far more ambitious and uh, typically uh, are more willing to uh, risk. They're more impetuous and they tend to do more for themselves, for their own careers and so on and so forth. This is just a general trend, it's not necessarily a, an actual sex thing, a difference between the sexes, but it might be, we're not, we're not entirely certain as of yet. Ultimately it's irrelevant, because who cares? Because the first time I heard the joke, why couldn't Helen Keller drive? Because she was a woman. It was from my 8th grade civics teacher who thought it was hilarious and appropriate to tell to our class multiple times. It's a joke. Get over it. Because men are ridiculed for showing stereotypically feminine traits. Didn't we already cover this? I'm sure that I already did this bit. Did you just repeat yourself? Okay, but I'm not going to. Because in the US, Viagra is covered by health insurance, but there is constant debate as to whether the same should be true of women's contraceptives. Uh, those are two different things. It's not surprising that they're treated differently. One is contraceptive, the other is typically used for uh, erectile dysfunction. They're not the same thing at all. I'm not surprised that they're treated differently. That's not weird in the slightest. I have no idea what your issue is with it. Also, Viagra has more medical uses, whereas contraceptives are used only for contraceptive use. They're two very different things. There's no reason that either should be necessarily be covered. The fact that they've chosen one and not another is not wrong. I honestly have no idea where your issue is here. Is it just you want free stuff? Is it just why isn't the government giving me free stuff? 
Right, okay. That does actually... No, I can see why you'd want feminism then, because feminism is, is essentially why isn't the government giving me free stuff. So, yeah, okay, I, I, I can actually understand that now. I can understand why you believe you need feminism. Got to say, though, I don't think necessarily the government should be giving you free stuff. So there's that. Because out of the 535 people in Congress, 20 are women. I need feminism because in a democratic system, the people haven't voted for the people I wanted to get in. Fuck off. And that's a good thing because that's the most there's ever been. Uh, people should vote for whoever they want, but ultimately shouldn't the people who get in be the best people? Not people because vagina? Isn't because vagina a terrible reason? I'm guessing you're going to vote Hillary Clinton, and I'm, I'm guessing this is because vagina. There's an awful lot of um, people going all like, oh, you know what, Hillary Clinton really has to get in. Why? Because she's a woman! Because vagina! And unfortunately, that's a dreadful reason. You want someone to rule your country, you want someone to have absolute power over the lives of millions of people, and you want to give this person this power because they have genitalia that matches yours. That's a shit idea. And you're an idiot. Because many men believe that being nice to women makes them entitled to sex. I have no idea who these men are that feminists keep talking about. Again, I've never met one, I've never seen one, I've never actually heard of one occurring. Uh, but I do know that men do typically do things that are nice for women in order to get sex. They know that it works, because uh, often it does. It's sort of like the way PUAs work, um, only they do kind of like the opposite. It's sort of like, you do a specific thing thinking that it will get you sex. You do the thing, sometimes you get sex. Therefore you keep doing the thing in order to get more sex. If what you find is that there are blokes who do the thing to get the sex, don't get the sex, and then are annoyed by this, fair enough. If they then say, no, I demand the sex, give me the sex, then they're a dick. But there's nothing really wrong with that. You can demand anything of anyone. What then happens is a difference between whether or not uh, they take it further. You can demand whatever you like. If what you're saying is these people demand things that they don't necessarily deserve and then take them by force, if you're saying these men are going, what? I was nice to you. Now I get to rape you and rape these people. Then yes, that's wrong, but it's wrong because they're raping someone. It's not wrong because they did the nice thing and then wanted sex. The wrong thing is the rape. And if this is a scenario that ever occurs, not that I know it does, then the thing you oppose is the rape, not the other bits of it. Again, this isn't an issue. I have no idea what you're on about. Because books written by women, even classics such as the work of Jane Austen, are considered chick lit instead of real literature. Yeah, but to be fair, Jane Austen's shit. I don't mean shit like she's the shit. I mean she's shit like she's awful, she's terrible, she's an atrocious writer. And in fact, to be fair, there's not many female writers I consider good. There are a fair few male writers I consider good, but ultimately, even the female writers I enjoy, I don't think are very good. I don't think it's because they're women, I think they just happen to not be very good. Um, if what you write is chick lit, lit for chicks, in that genre, in that style, then it's going to be deemed that way. There's nothing wrong with that. At all. Hang on, I already covered I did this in a video before. Well, how, for some reason, you need awards that are just for women. It was ridiculous then, it's ridiculous now. Fuck off. Seriously, though, think about it. How many books by women did you read in high school? Probably at least a hundred. Is that not enough? Am I supposed to read more? Oh, no. That's sad. I'm sorry I didn't meet your standards for however many books I was supposed to read by women during high school. I read a lot of books during high school. Some of them were by women, some of them were by men. 
should it really matter? Or are you again arguing, because vagina? Because I've already said that's not a very good argument, in that it's not even an argument, and that were you to employ it as an argument, you would fail on the grounds that it's not an argument. This getting through to you yet at all? No, of course it didn't. Because what most people don't seem to understand is that feminism benefits both genders by ultimately seeking to remove gender roles. Uh, now here's something I can potentially agree with. I can say that um, compulsory gender roles are a bad thing. However, compulsory gender roles don't actually exist. I know everyone seems to think they do, everyone seems to think that we're all trapped into this weird cycle of being in traditionalist households, but that's not the way that works. Men don't actually have to be traditional men. Women don't actually have to be traditional women. Therefore, feminism isn't needed here. Therefore, feminism isn't helping both sexes. If we were in a society where strict gender roles were enforced on pain of death or whatever, then yes, I would agree and I would join the feminist movement. As it happens though, we aren't. So I won't. So you're wrong. Again. I could go on, but I think this video is long enough already. If you can think of any other examples, or if you have anything to say on this topic, then please don't hesitate to comment. Otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Bye! Anyway, um, this video is currently about 47 minutes long. I was going to stick on her friend's video afterwards and uh, respond to that too, but by the end of this, it'll, it'll mean the video will be like an hour and a half long, so instead I'll do that as its own separate video. Um, right, I apologise for not having done as much content recently. Uh, I've been really fucking busy, and it's my last week here. I'm moving back up north again uh, for the next few weeks. And next week I will be spending, it'll be my last week with my girlfriend before we disappear apart for a couple of months. Uh, so I'll be spending the vast majority of that week with her. Uh, so unfortunately I'm not going to be doing that much content anytime soon. But as soon as that's up, I'll hopefully be back to one video a day. I, I actually doubt I'll end up doing that, but I would like to do that and I will hopefully get around to it. So I apologise for my tardiness as of late. Um, God, it's so fucking hot today. It's apparently the hottest day of the year again. It was the hottest day of the year like four days ago. Then it was the hottest day of the year the day after. Then it was the hottest day of the year the day after. The day after. Now today, it just keeps getting fucking hotter. Anywho, right, that's all done with. Oh, and I apologise for the audio quality. I still haven't fixed my microphone, so I'm currently using the microphone on my camera, and it's no good. But hopefully, you're all okay with it. Anyway, fuck off, everyone, and of course, good luck.